So the first tip that you might wanna test, don't just full out on jump in and start listing every single product like this, but you certainly might wanna test it, is something that used to work on eBay a while back, and that's dollar price plus shipping and then raise the shipping cost. The reason that this works to increase your profit margins is twofold. First, you're not paying the fee on, on Facebook because your price is so low, so you're only paying the minimal fee on your product and then you're charging the shipping at a higher rate so your profit margin and what you get paid out is gonna be a lot higher. So for example, if your product is $25 with $5 shipping or $30 with free shipping and you mark it down to a dollar with $29 shipping or a dollar with $26 shipping, you're gonna make more money just by simply doing that because of the fees. That's a no-brainer. The second reason that this works is because on Facebook Marketplace, you're kind of competing against other products that are very, very similar. And then a lot of, in a lot of ways, if it's saturated, you start competing on price with a lot of other sellers and what's suggested to them. And so you can increase your clicks by simply lowering your price to a dollar. And then that's gonna result in a lot more interest on your listing, which ideally, if you're getting more interest, more clicks on your listing, a few of those will translate into more sales because there's just simply more numbers of people checking out your listing. The second tip is to use cashback credit cards. Now, if you're drop shipping using retail sites that are common like Amazon, eBay, Walmart or Home Depot, and there's a number of other ones out there with store cards and you are not using that store card that gives you back 5%, you're missing out on a ridiculous amount of profit margin. For example, if you only spent 10, like 10, let's make it easy, let's say $10,000 a month uh, on Amazon, for example. Well, that's $500 you're missing out on simply by not using the Amazon store card that gives you 5% cash back. The same would apply to Walmart, the same would apply to eBay, the same would apply to Home Depot or any of the other ones. And obviously, as you scale and you start spending more and more money, that's only gonna come back more and more into your profit margins by using cash back credit cards. Now, if you're not on those websites, at the very least, you should look into other cashback credit cards. I've seen good ones that give up to 2%, but even a 1% one will make a slight difference. The next tip is very related to that, and that's to use cashback portals. So just like cashback credit cards, cashback portals are little Chrome extensions that you link up in the right-hand corner, and you click on them and you activate the cashback on those specific websites that it integrates with to give you extra cashback. Now that cashback differs from website to website, but typically it's anywhere from like 1% all the way up to like 10, or I've even seen 15% sometimes times on certain websites. So you do the math on that, that's gonna make a massive difference. Now, I personally love uh, Rakuten. That's my favorite. I've also recommended Honey and the Capital One one in the past. I like Rakuten, I think it's the best in my opinion. However, any one of them will increase your profit margins just by simply checking to see if you can get extra cash back using that uh, on the specific sites that you're buying on. So always use a cash back credit card always use a cashback portal, they're no brainers. The next one is one that you should certainly be careful with and that's to use discounted gift cards. Now, this is not something, full disclosure, that I really play around with too much, but it is something that you can explore if you do it correctly with reputable sites. So what happens is if people get, for example, credit cards that they, they maybe for a birthday or for Christmas or something like that, and then they wanna you know redeem that money but they don't necessarily want something in that store, what they can do is sell it back to a website that buys those gift cards and you can be the beneficiary of that because then you can buy that gift card heavily discounted on the website and make more money because your money's gonna go farther because you are gonna actually use that gift card on that website. The next one is simple, but for whatever reason, a lot of people don't do it, and that's to just list higher priced products. Now, yes, the profit margin on a $200 sale, if you're marking it up 40% or 30% or 25% or whatever it is, is gonna be the same profit margin as if you market like a $10 product up the same amount. But the profit number is gonna be different even if the margin is the same, right? So if you make a $200 sale, 40% of that is a lot more than 40% of a $10 sale. It's basic math. And finally, the last tip is to get tax exempt. So if you're using a wholesale supplier, you should automatically be tax exempt because chances are if it's a reputable wholesale supplier, you would have had to give them your retail certificate or your, your resale permit to get on the website in the first place. So you should be tax exempt and not be charged for taxes. If you're using a retail site like Home Depot or Amazon or eBay or Walmart, again, there's another way that you can obviously file for tax exemption because you are not the end buyer and end consumer of that product. So you don't have to pay the sales tax on the product when you actually buy it on the website. None of these tips to increase your profit margins are gonna matter at all if you're listing the wrong products.